How many here get the libertarian connection? Okay. Sky, the guy who runs it, is very much into futurism and he has a futures project. Is that mine? Oh. Uh, what, what futurism is, is not really predicting a future like with a glass ball, but people sit down and on the best, and the basis of the best information they have, project alternative futures. What would happen if? And that incidentally is what the value of science fiction is. Uh, that should have been the emphasis of that talk, I think. Um, to, it's better to have thought something about the future than to have thought nothing at all, because that's why we're in the mess we're in now, say, with the ecological problem, because the people who invented the automobile didn't think about uh, what a multifold uh, increase of the automobiles would do. And, and it's the bureaucrats, especially, who are really backwards in their views on things. Almost every large regulatory agency in uh, D.C. was created 30 years ago for problems which either don't exist anymore or have changed significantly. And, uh, you know, like, what do the farmers need subsidies anymore for? And, and just about everything. And another example would be the FCC. Within two years, we'll have cartridge TV on the market. And what's going to happen to the FCC? Do they, uh, are they thinking about what they're going to do? They're probably thinking about how they're going to try to regulate that, not... Uh. Anyway, so, to have thought about the different alternatives means that you're ready to apply capital and uh, organization to, to problems that are going to be coming up. And what you can do is say, um, some particular trend, trend it out, and um, see what would happen if... Uh, say, if the water supply, the water demand keeps increasing in New York City in the year such and such, such and such will happen. And then um, try to get as many of these into a computer as possible, all these different trends, and uh, see, try to think about the synergistic effects based on previous synergistic effects. And of course, synergistic effects in them are, by their very nature, in, impossible to predict, but you can kind of... Um, and what has happened, you can kind of increasingly f predict even synergistic effects. There, there are now theories for, for predicting when uh, uh, synergism between two fields of uh, science will occur based on previous, uh, previous occurrences and based on, uh, on the concept, the amount of experience in some particular field that people have. And there are a lot of new... Um, techniques that the think tanks have developed so that this is not really a crystal ball or any kind of crazy thing, but they really are able to, um, to do something, say, for a company that uh, was making buggy whips around the turn of the century. Now, a company uh, into futurism would, uh, would be thinking about what they're going to do with their money. You know, they, they just heard um, in a technical journal that some guy came up with an internal combustion engine and they sit down and think what might happen with that. And they just daydream and they think, well, gee, because, you know, we would need horses if they attach that to wheels. And that means that we ought to uh, start changing the equipment that produces buggy whips so that uh, they can be quickly transformed into producing automobiles so we keep the highest rate of profit. And what that means for the libertarian movement is that uh, you can do the same kind of thing. You can trend out things like the hippie movement. Um, five minutes. Um, and there's a kind of a, a leisure um, personality being developed in America where people are less and less interested in the striving for money. Now, what does that mean uh, as we increasingly have problems that are very difficult to solve? Um, you know, there, there are other trends that are occurring. Let's see. One is the free school movement, uh, women's lib. And you trend these out and see where is the best place um, to work. And wonder how, how many people have read Future Shock. I figured. <laughs> uh, the year 2000, that's really difficult, but it's worth just flipping through it and seeing how they produce scenarios of, say, a possible nuclear um, catastrophe. You know that that was done for the government. You know, who else would want to know about that? Um, and there are various magazines on the future, such as The Futurist. 
Uh, in education, how many people have read uh, John Holt? Mm-hmm. Well, there's a, a movement happening around his ideas and, and the ideas of a few other people. Again, this strange kind of liberal who's coming up with free market ideas, Ivan Elick. You read him and you can't quite tell whether he's a conservative, a radical, a liberal, or anything. He's sitting there recommending things are put... He's, he's also in favor of abolishing certain kinds of property or something, but a lot of his recommendations, if enacted, and they are being enacted, uh, would really change uh, schooling into education. And Paul Goodman is another one. He's, he's kind of loose, but he's got some good ideas about the deleterious effects of the schools on kids. Kozal, so forth, George Dennison. And then, uh, for the people doing systems analysis work, there's uh, a fellow named Forrester, Jay Forrester, who uses um, computer models, and he's no libertarian. He probably doesn't know very much about it unless someone's talked to him. But his conclusions are uh, consistently liber- libertarian, although he never uses the word libertarian. What he says is that social systems are counterintuitive, which means that all the, the people who have been recommending that the solution for urban problems is more low-cost housing have been wrong because social systems are counterintuitive, which means, in, a, in our terminology, that brute force doesn't work. But if you try to push something one way, you always have this crazy side effect. Like rent control, always something else happens. But here's someone, some guy doing it uh, with computer models. What he does is he feeds all the facts in, and then they're all laid out in front of him, so he doesn't have any of the contradictions that the bureaucrat does, because uh, the thing won't read if, uh, if there's a contradiction. Furthermore, you, of course, you can hold more material in a computer model than you can in a mental model. So he first he did uh, what was it? industrial dynamics, then he went to urban dynamics, and just finished something on world dynamics. And um, that is in, uh, I think, the recent, most recent issue of Technology Review. And just to read it is really a thrill because here's the guy who knows nothing about any of the ideology but is coming to these conclusions. It's really gratifying. And then there's, uh, I guess, a book called Pentagon Capitalism. This is, uh, and all the, all the revisionist history is really good along this line because uh, really find out how society really works opposed to uh, the, um, the mental models everyone has. Um, some some nice trends are within a few years there's going to be computers in in many homes and then eventually most homes. That means that you can have individualized news because you can just say I only want news about uh, about Spirit T. Agnew or I don't want any news about Spirit T. Agnew. You know and and whatever you want there'll be some journals that can provide it because you now are able to appeal to much smaller markets and still make a profit. The same thing with cartridge TV. That means that uh, this could be taped and we could make a profit on it. Or some enterprising fellow. Well, if you get the capital, I get the brain. Uh, also, the, the thing Bob was talking about with the professional, the professionals uh, in the think tanks becoming more and more like, like on their own is an interesting trend towards a freelance society, which is what we want. We want more and more people to, at the end of the year, have to pay the lump sum taxes and to not pay it. And I guess advertising is a really good industry for that kind of thing. It's really decentralized and uh, creative. Other things people can look towards are the, the taxpayers' revolt. Um, women's lib because uh, it's a psychological rather than a political movement. And so Marxism is often very much put down because, you know, it's, they say, well, we'll have to solve, my, I have to solve my own problem before I worry about the government. And that's a significant change in political movements. You can expect that to happen increasingly in the future, that, that, that movements will be towards uh, self-improvement, which means less and less, uh, um, uh, you know, marches on Washington to solve things. Uh, questions? No questions. All right. Well, I mean, I mean, when, when these arguments of yours going into this uh, existing corporate structure, uh, yeah. using the uh, research film of the person who created it, using the uh, data process, or trying to make something work that's falling apart, haven't we read all that? Isn't that what's going on? You know, the government starts passing, you know, start going and bribing the, 
these producers to come, uh, come and play the film. Uh, aren't you basically going uh, to the position of where he says three marks four? It depends uh, how fast normative planning becomes the vogue and uh, and how much integration these liberals who are proposing free market uh, solutions have, have reached like like one fellow said that they're going to see that the end of the, they're going to see the logic of their proposals and what are they going to do there's a, something in transaction which is a magazine of Rutgers uh, where the, where the lady says she did a comprehensive study of the taxis in D.C., and she came to the conclusion, she said, my liberal friends are going to hate me, and I don't believe this, but I'm saying this, but the free market is the best solution. Um, so what, what really happens is, well, uh, well, how else, what are you going to do, bomb buildings? I really don't know. What's, what's the alternative, passing out leaflets? Where, where does that get you? You have to earn a living, don't you? <laughs> well, earn even less than that and get welfare or, or food stamps. Huh? That's good. Okay, I just want to get into to one more thing now. Um, what, I, what I wanted this conference to be, and perhaps the next one can be, is more of a conference on tactics. Because even, even now there aren't that many questions about, about tactics. It seems like what everyone wants to discuss is theory. Now, I've been into that for a couple of years, so uh, I've already covered it. But there must be a lot of people who are very frustrated and who would um, uh, and very much like to have something done. I had the idea where we can invite people from all these different positions, like we can have John Holt and Ivan Ewick and all these different people, and we wouldn't argue with them about free market economics because we know they're full of shit, you know. Um, but we would just discuss the structure of society and what we can do on, in the areas that we agree upon, and we could have like a trade fair where we trade uh, ideas of um, of social change, and it would not be an ideological. Uh, there wouldn't be any kind of debates between an, uh, anarcho-capitalism and, and capitalism or anything like that, but just merely discussion of people who have common goals, when and where we have common goals. And some of the movements I mentioned there are very common goals. Uh, what we can do together. Uh, maybe we can maybe we can talk about this uh, another time next fall or something. All right, then, let me just hang on out. Uh, we have another speaker in just a moment. I'd like to first announce uh, Philip D'Annunzio. You dropped your ticket. <laughs>